what's going on? What's up, <laughs> this, Nico? Is, this is the bag skate. We are doing the podcast now because uh yes, sir. Because we canceled the show. No, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't cancel the show. We um, just for today. We're just off for, for today. today. We're doing stuff. So this is a pre-recorded show. I'm not even just gonna be on YouTube. YouTube only. For you yeah. special people, for our non-subscribers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> for you one subscriber that's out there, special for you. <laughs> <laughs> you get a you get a podcast. All right. Um. So we are talking uh the NHL. So the NHL is putting out their top fifteen, top twenty lists of uh, forwards, right wing centers, left wings, defenders, goalies. Um. We're gonna put out our own. We're doing the top fifteen. Uh, buddy over here did a top twenty of the left wings. <laughs> that's what, I thought that's what we were, we were doing. <laughs> He's so, uh he's being excited for next week. <laughs> Prelude for next week. I'm gonna have all my rankings done next week, I think. <laughs> well, this is we're NHL insiders, so <laughs> be ready. All right, so this is the back skate. I'm on uh, I'm Nikos, uh Nico from the TO. You can follow me on Twitter at Nico from the TO. He is met. Big blonde bear, Melissa. So that's right. We are gonna get started with our top fifteen right wingers. Um, I'll say mine first. I do have a couple. Um, what are those things called if they're not in the top? Honorable top? mentions. Honorable mentions. There's words. Um, <laughs> there's, words. <laughs> there's words. All right. So. For honorable mentions, I have Aho of the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, he played center. He played right wing. I didn't really feel like he's in a top 15. And these are just top 15 rankings. It's not like by points. It's just kind of our own opinion. So it's not really a special kind of thing. Um, so I have Aho, just say hypothetically, at 18. Uh, Brock Besser, if he played a full season, Brock Besser would have been in my top uh, my top 10 for sure. Because he had 29 goals in 55 games. So he would have at least finished with 40 as a rookie. Um, and then I have Riley Smith. So those are my uh, my 18, 17, 16 picks uh, in the case that happens. But for, Solid picks. Yes, sir. So uh, for 15, I have uh, Daddy, Daddy Dandinoff, Dandinoff from uh, Evgeny Dandinoff from the Florida Panthers. Um, he, he had 65 points, 28 goals, 37 assists. Uh, yeah, he, he kind of snuck up on you, didn't he? You know, it's... Like, I, I was looking through the stats today, and... I I kind of like I didn't even remember who he was until I saw it. And yeah. I was like, oh my god, this guy had a year. Yeah. No, it's I I I'm gonna bring I always bring up NHL game references, but um, every time I play NHL, Dad enough would always come in my draft somehow, some way. He would he'd have a three and from like NHL 12 to like NHL 14, they had rankings where it was like in stars. So it'd be like if you had like a three and a half green star for whatever reason, you become amazing. But if you had a four star, you're you're trash. Um, and if you had a higher ranking, um. Anyway, Dad enough would always come become like an 87 score, like a hundred points. And uh, yeah, so obviously in heaven. Last time he was in the NHL, which was in uh, the 2011-2012 season, he only played 15 games at three three points, and just left, went to the KHL. It hasn't been in the NHL in almost eight in eight years, pretty much. Well, six yeah. years. So um, he had 65 points, which is pretty amazing. He was fourth in the uh, in team points, uh, second in goal scoring with uh, those 28 uh, points. But yeah, no, a huge addition for the Panthers. Um, a big no with Riley Smith getting traded, or yeah, he was traded to the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, they did have a little bit of depth issue, but he really literally just came in and soaked it up. Uh, obviously, they didn't make the playoffs, but that's still a huge addition to have 65 points and be fourth yeah. in scoring on a team. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, definitely that'd be my 15th. Who'd you pick? Uh, for 15, I went with X Blackhawk, who should still be here, Tavo Teravainen. Tavo Terrabine, how many points did he have? I he think 64. 64 points. You know what? Um, that did sneak up. But that was the one that sneaked I didn't think he had that many points until I like looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> and him and Ajo had a really fantastic season for the Carolina Hurricanes. They kind of fell off towards the end of the season. Then they kind of pattered. They were they were flirting with playoffs, and then they just kind of – So, um, yeah. But, yeah, Tivo was definitely one of those. He was trading the Brian Bickle trade. He was the um, the sweetener, I guess you would call it, so that the Hurricanes would take on the Bickle contract. And um, funny how they got rid of that right after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that's that's the position the Hawks find themselves in. Oof. And uh, yeah, it's rough. Definitely someone we didn't want to see get traded. No doubt. Yeah. So that's a good pick. I guess fifteenth over. But so you literally think he's fifteenth in all the right wingers and all of them in the league. He's fifteenth. Uh, Best winger. Well, I I did it because he's he's young, so I still think he's going to get better. 
and he is very talented. You're right. You're right. So true, true. I kind of did it maybe on a little bit of a future projection. But, you know, I mean, putting up 64 points on a bad Hurricanes team is that's a pretty solid season. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. All right. So uh, for number 14, I have the Minnesota Wild with uh, Mikael Grunlin at 21 goals, 46 assists, 67 points. Um, he actually had a two-point uh, decrease from last year, which he had 69, which is hilarious. Um, it was his second straight season with 60 points. Um I definitely think he's one of the more underrated players. Oh, for sure. No just, doubt. Like, just because he plays, when you have big player names, I know Parise hasn't been a huge like top-notch player in a couple in a couple years, but still, you don't, when you think of Minnesota Wild, you still think of Ryan Suter, Koivu, and uh, Parise, and yeah. you don't even think of Groundlin, even though Groundlin the last two seasons has pretty much led them in point scoring. Yep. So well, I, very, uh, very underrated player, but, um, you know, when you look at the stats... They do kind of sneak up on you, but, you know, just from the Hawks playing in their division, he is a very good player. Yeah. And he's you notice him out there in those games, so you just don't think about him because he's not – he doesn't have the name power like the guys you mentioned. Right. And, yeah, I I think – well, he was a, he was a center for the majority of his uh, – beginning of his career, and it wasn't really working out. And now you see with their centers now, Eric Stahl, Coyle. Um, I can't think of anybody else right now off the top of my head. But um, they do have a decent uh, top three center group. Um, and he was kind of pushed to the wing, and obviously he's found great uh, offense. Who did you have for number 14? For number 14, I, I don't know how he fell this far. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, I was just going through the list, and I was like, oh, I didn't pick him yet, so I threw him on there. Uh, Joe Pavelski. Joe Pavelski. No, I I looked at him, and I think he plays more center than right wing, but it's he plays both, so it's yeah. not really a big deal. I, I When I went through, I went through how the NHL um, put position-wise, which I know is not always correct, but uh, Joe Pavelski is one of those players I know always kind of plays center. And because Joe Thornton was injured last season, he played center primarily as a second line center for him. But yeah. no doubt, he did play right wing for a lot of his season. But again, anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I was just going off the the listing on the Hockey News website, and mm-hmm. um, you know, Joe Pavelski. I mean, the guy's been great for a decade now, and he's. Pro- would you say he's the heart and soul of the Sharks? Uh you know. Or would you say Burns or Thornton? I think. Three years ago, it was it was a uh, it was Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe. Um, now I think it's Couture's and uh, Joe Pavelski's team. I think I, I always again we're talking about underrated players. Not that Joe Pavelski is an underrated player. Do you know how many points he had this last season? Sixty six. Sixty six. That's not a bad total on on a really on a really honestly a decently good Sharks team. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he's underrated. I just think he's one of those players you don't really think about. You know, when I think yeah. of the Sharks, I do think right. of Joe Thornton. I think of Brent Burns, and uh, to some aspects, you know, same on the same team. I think the Sharks are one of those teams that aren't, aren't completely aren't as covered as a lot of other NHL teams because they're no, a West Vlasic, Coast team. Well, Vlasic, who is a fantastic, he's been uh, one of the most underrated defensemen exactly for a team long Canada. Time now. He wasn't even in the top uh, twenty for NHL rankings. For for uh for defensemen, so that's ridiculous. Uh, exactly, he's one of the best. His Corsi ratings and his advanced stats are mm-hmm. off the charts. Not crazy, but they're they're pretty, pretty good. Um, but yeah, no. I, again, back to Pavelski. Um, definitely, he is one of those guys. I I don't really think about, but you know, he's good. So yeah. definitely, that, that is a good choice. I again, I didn't really go from position wise. I kind of went off of who I knew played right wing played during the season. So. Um, we are at number 13. So number 13, I have Mark Stone with 20 goals, 42 assists, 62 points. He only played 58 games this season, and he ended up with 62 points, which is two points off of his career high. Um, yeah. That's he, he, yeah, that, <laughs> tremendous production. I know, especially on a team that um, – or on a team that pretty much flailed this last season. Yeah. He, him, it was pretty much him, Hoffman, and Carlson for the most part. While Duchesne, uh, he had 50 points this season, I think, 52 points. Uh, he just wasn't one of those players that was um, you know, a difference maker. But anyway, back to Stone, having only played 58 games and being having those 62 points is pretty – think about over a over a whole 82-game season, let's just tack on, I don't know, 30 more points. Maybe even twenty five more points. That's still like an eighty five point range. 
That's still over a point per game. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So definitely. Uh, and what's what's funny thing is he had an eight point increase from the last season, which when he played seventy one games. So definitely, if he played more games and had uh, you know was healthier, he definitely would have been higher on this list. But uh, for what he produced in fifty eight games for sixty points, thirteenth uh, overall. I, that that's where I have him. All right, who do you got? Thirteenth overall. Uh, you already talked about him, but I had Michael Granlund. Okay, okay. From the we, Wild. We see him. Oh, there's my phone. Forgot the <laughs> got to mute those things. Oh, boy. Um, all right, so we're at number 12, and that's where my list kind of got a little weird because I I wasn't completely sure who I wanted to pick. Uh, see, the, doing these lists, though, it's it's so hard. I just love everybody. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean. <laughs> They're such nice guys. All right. So for number 12, I had um, the Russian sniper, uh, other Russian sniper, uh, Tarasenko. He had 33 goals, 33 assists, 66 points, which was a 10-point decrease from last season where he had 76 points. Um, it's the worst goal-scoring season since his sophomore year in 2013-2014, and he only had 20 goals that season. But he was still second in team scoring. But, I have him a lot higher on my list. Do you? But... Yeah. No, that's what I mean. It was just based off of this season. He wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't the same Terrace Sangle. Like he wasn't. Yeah. He went for a lot. I think he had like 10 point stretch or a 10 game stretch where he just didn't score a point or an assist, and it was just it, he looked really bad out there, and it was. He wasn't injured at all. He played a full season, and I don't know. It was, he looked kind of weird. Not, you know what? Thirty-three goals and thirty-three assists isn't nothing to scoff at. Don't get me wrong. Six, that's six. Pretty decent. That's a really season. good. That's a really good season. But for somebody of his caliber, you expect more. You do you're, expect you're, more. You're probably expecting a forty-goal campaign. Yeah. At least. And he's one of those guys where he signed that seven point five million dollar contract. He was. He's expected to be the team leader, not only in goals but on the ice as well. And I think this season was kind of. One of those where he just kind of took a step back, in my opinion. But uh, not not saying that 33 goals isn't a lot. So, I mean, last year at 39, um, there was a 10-point difference. So, I don't know, maybe chalk that one up as they did miss the playoffs. So, it wasn't a completely great season for the team in general. They did miss yeah. it by one point. So, I don't know. I'll just chalk it up as, as an off season. But still, I think it's 12th overall. Who do you got? Uh, 12th overall, I had Josh Bailey from the Islanders. Josh Bailey, Josh Bailey. Because oh. he was another one that kind of snuck up on you. And yeah. I You look at the stats, he had 71 points this year, 53 assists. Yep. So that's that's a great season. That's also a fifth. That was, he had a 15. I have him at... Uh, I have him a little bit further up on the list, but not to spoil it too much. But um, yeah, that was a 15 point increase from his last season, so that was a uh, definitely good. That it makes you wonder where he's going to be without Tavares. Yeah, that's definitely a concern. But, but at the same time, it's like, hey, you replaced Tavares with Barzell. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess. All right. So you have Bailey. We're at number 11. Mm-hmm. Um, number 11. I had my boy. Uh, Burned the barn down, Mitch Marner. Uh, I totally forgot he played right wing, even though he's my favorite player. <laughs> when I was doing this list, I didn't even have him on my list. And I was like, wait a second. I'm we, missing We got to put him in here somewhere. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Um, all right, so Mitch Marner, he had 22 goals, 47 assists, 69 points. That's hilarious. Uh, and uh, he was 37th in the league with in point total. Um, which was a career high, 69 points, which is an eight-point increase from last season. He led the team in points, was tied for the team leading assist with Gardner with 47 assists, and uh, he had 27 power play points. Um, I just want to say, Marner is one of those players that you you want on your team. Is he's a fantastic supplement player to your main star. Yeah. You know, it's like having Saad when he was amazing with Taves. Yep. You're like, Taves is your main dude, but you have Saad scoring 60 points, yep. and he's still amazing on his own aspect. Mm-hmm. Marner, like, during the season, Marner took, for a 20-game stretch, Marner was literally just God. Like, he, so you give him the puck, he just dance. Yep. He would just go through. There was a goal. He scored. Hey, we have it in our opener. That didn't work last week. <laughs> but we'll, work, we'll work next week. There was a goal where Marner went through uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets, took it in from his from his own end of the ice. Gardner passing the puck through the middle of the ice, goes past one one defender in the in the central ice. 
throws it on the boards um, to himself, passes to himself, goes around another defender, does a toe drag, and just snipes it past Bobrowski and just does this sly little smile. <laughs> and there's a gif of it. It's a sly little smile he gives he gives Matthews when he looks at him. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was dirty. I know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, he's just nasty. Uh, he's definitely one of the, obviously, one of the, the top young uh, scorers in uh that Toronto has uh, for their core. But uh, anyway, who do you have number 11? I had Alexander Radulov from Raj. the Dallas Stars. The Raj. The Red. So, you know, we we know he's a talented player. He underperformed in Montreal. Uh, ends up going to Dallas. And where are the stats here? 27 goals, 45 assists, 72 points on the year. Yep. So now I know Dallas is a high scoring team, mm-hmm. but that was definitely a huge pickup for them. And um, definitely, he definitely did a lot more than he did with the Canadians. Yeah, how much, he's sure. only getting $4.5 million. And that was an 18 point increase. I have him at number nine. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 when I, I don't really watch a lot of. Um, of Dallas Tar games, but a couple games I do because I do like watching Tyler Sagan. Yeah, um, the couple games I did, like he, he's again, he's one of those supplement players that you want, but he also drives a line as well. So yeah. you don't really get wingers aren't aren't the type of players that drive lines. They're more of the players you pass the puck to and they put it in the net. But they're not the guys who start the cycle going, who drive into the zone and get the play started. Um, he is one of those guys. He's super aggressive. He he has a great two way. He's a very underrated two way game. He's an aggressive two way game, I should say, because he's always yeah. going in there head first and just banging, get banging, banging it out. I mean, he also uh, had seventy two penalty minutes last year. Too. Yeah, he's he's a. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's a he's an aggressive little guy mm-hmm. <laughs> or big guy. I don't know how tall. I think he's five foot eleven. One of those two. All right. So we had that. What number were we at? We're number eleven, we're, we're, right? We're All cracking right. the top ten. Cracking the top ten. All right. You already mentioned them earlier. I had number ten. Uh, uh, Josh Bailey, like I said, 18 goals, 53 assists, 71 points. Um, he did it. Obviously, that was a career high. He did, he was a negative 20, by the way, too, which uh, begs the difference to the next stat. He had 31 power play points. So out of his uh, 71 points, he had 31 of those were on the power play. So Yeah, but you need that, though. Yeah. Because having a bad power play can, can absolutely kill you. Right. So, so, yeah, that's what I had. All right, who do you have at number 10? Uh, you talked about him. Your boy, Mitch Marner. Love that guy. All right. The Mitch Burner. All right. We have uh, number nine. I had Radulov. Uh, like we talked about, 27 goals, 45 assists, 72 points, career high, 18-point uh, increase from last year since leaving Montreal. The, we didn't talk about this, but so he left Montreal um, because – Bergevin didn't give him the contract that he wanted, but he ended up signing the same amount, same dollar amount Bergeron was going to give him, but in Dallas because uh, Bergeron was saying, hey, I don't know if I want to keep you yeah. because we're going to look at other players, which is absolutely crazy in my opinion. Um, anyway, so they lost a 72-point player when they really need him. Uh, Who did you have at number nine? Uh, David Pasternak. The Pasta. Pasternak? Pasternak? Pasta. I just call him Pasta. Uh, from the Boston Bruins. Oh, I hate that guy, so too. So <laughs> he played a full 82-game season, 35 goals, 45 assists, 80 points on the year. He was dirty, man. I mean, last year he had 34, 34 goals. Um, so he was second on a team in goal in scoring. Uh, his, it was the second straight 30-goal season. Um, he did sign a big contract extension with the club, uh, with the Boston Bruins. Um I'm not, I don't know how to say it. He's a great, obviously, 80 points is nothing to scoff at. But you never, again, one of those players I never, it's because I'm not, I'm a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, so I'm designated to hate the Boston Bruins. Of course. Um, so I say this in an aspect where it's like, I don't know a lot about Pasternak. I know him from the playoff series, which he just dominated the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I, if that's him the whole season, God bless anybody who goes against <laughs> David Pasternak because he was he was scary player. He was just sniping things. I mean, 35 goals obviously proves it itself, um, which is a 10-point increase from last season, by the way. So he did a 70 points. Now he's a um, good player. Definitely a good young player for them. Good. They, they signed him to a good contract, too. So there's that. Um, we're at number eight, right? Yep. Number eight. Off the Blackhawks, Patrick Kane, 27 goals, 49 assists, 76 points. Uh, he led the team in points, but I do have a point to make about the points. <laughs> okay. Um, so 2015-16, he had 106 points. Yep. Went on an amazing scoring run. Won the Hart Trophy. Won the Hart Trophy. Um, 
The next season, he had 89 points. Yeah. And then this season at 76 points. Um, you know, I was I was kind of shocked that he actually had 76 points. Because it, it sure didn't seem like that. He was a negative 20. Year. Yeah. Negative 20 as well. So I, I, I don't want to... He's still a, a fantastic... 76 points is still a lot of points. You know? Like, thinking about it, a lot of players don't even get that much. Yeah. <laughs> and purely on the fact that the second... Who was the second leading scorer on the team? The Bring Cat? 52 yeah, points? I believe so. 28 yeah. goals? That's your second secondary score? I think maybe Taves had 50-something points? Maybe even less? Uh, when you have a guy who has 20 points higher than the guy next to him... You know, how many points can you get? And yeah. he doesn't have Panarin anymore either. You got to think of it that way, too. So it's it's a weird kind of thing that they're going on with Chicago. But still, Patrick Kane, he would have been way higher maybe like two years ago. But again, you know, 76 points. He was a negative 20. Um, I think he only had about 15 power play points. So he wasn't really that effective on the power play Their power this play season. sucks. <laughs> yeah, it no It sucked duh. for years. That was actually one of the, the more shocking things about all those Stanley Cup runs is Aside from 2010, the power play was bad every year. Yeah, they had a fantastic penalty kill, though. Yeah. Um, all right, so who would you have for number uh, number eight? I had Miko Rantanen from the Colorado Avalanche. Oh, yeah, my boy Rant. So 29 goals, 55 assists for a total of 84 points in 81 games played this year. Oh, you want to hear the most uh, surprising stat that I found? Sure. All right, you ready for this? He had a, he had a 46-point increase. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he had 38 points this season. The before. Avalanche were historically bad two years. <laughs> and they were hysterically bad, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were funny bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, he was, uh, he's nuts. He was actually eighth in power play points with 35. So, <laughs> I st- that that I, point total just gets me funny. It's like he had a 46 point uh, increase. See, and that's why I was, I was debating whether or not to rank him that high because is that kind of a fluke season? I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. I don't think so. His but, size. He's six foot four. He's yeah. a big boy. And he's yeah. and he was drafted tenth overall. Now he came into the league his rookie year. Um they kept him for the nine games. He looked fantastic those games. He didn't score a lot of points, but they, they said no throw him back down. And then the next season obviously was that horrible uh see, nobody had a good season. Right. And then you know, obviously they uh McKinnon had a big effect on him. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're just good together. You know, maybe it's a fluke. I think he averages out 60 points. Um, Landon Scott goes had like 62 points this season after having consecutive bad uh, totals. All right. So number seven, I had uh, I had Pasternak. Uh, like he said, 35 goals, 45 assists. Uh, that was a career high in points. Um, he was second on the team in scoring. Like I said, 60 uh, second straight 30 plus goal season. Um, yeah. Who'd you have for number seven? Number seven. I had Patrick Line. Patrick Line. You have you have seven? Not top five? <sighs> yeah, yeah. I guess I'll see who your top five is. But I, I can't. I was going to have him. He, in, he was another one, too, who actually, once I got outside of the top five. It's hard. I was like, oh, I didn't pick him yet? I guess I should probably put him here. Yeah, no, it's hard. I, I forgot Voracek, too. Uh, I forgot that guy. All right, so number seven, you had you had uh, Line A. I Line A is a fantastic player. I, I'll I'll talk about him a little bit a little bit further ahead. He's a little in my upper deck. Um, number six, I did have our boy uh, Miko Miko Rantanen. Uh, like I said, he was second on the team in points. So good player, young guy. We'll see what the future holds. Who'd you have for number six for you? Uh, number six, I had Jacob Voracek. Voracek led the. No, he didn't. Well, he was leading. The league in assists for a while until he had 65. like 65. Yeah, he well, I mean, he was fourth. He was fourth in assist leaders. So uh, there's that. He he had 82. He had 80 points a couple seasons ago. He's been a very good player for a while now. Yeah, yeah. He, I, he's not a player that's underrated because you always hear about Borchek. Yeah, but he was also he had two seasons in a row where he only had 60 points, and he has like an 8.5 million dollar contract, which was huge when he signed it. Yeah, him and him and Giroux's contract. Um. But yeah, no, this season he had uh, a career high, 85 points, 20 goals, 65 assists. He's a great player. Yes. Um, it was a career high. Uh, he was 13th in the league in uh, in points, uh, fourth among assists, which was also a 24-point uh, increase, increase from last season. So I always find the increase in points uh, a huge kind of thing, which I don't think a lot of people talk about. 
But definitely, I mean, it is. It's definitely interesting. Twenty-four point increase is yeah. uh, pretty good. Yeah. All right. So that was what number six you yep. had. So we're, so we're going top five. Top now? five. All right. I just talked about Voracek. That was my fifth overall pick. Who'd you have for my, your number five? My number five, and maybe I I have him ranked this high because every time I watch him play, he lights it up. Absolutely kills the Blackhawks. Hold it's on. Let me think. Oh, Tarasenko. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had him. What I have? I had him at twelfth. I swear to God, I, I, he scores every time they play. Yeah, I always remember. So during the, the Sharks versus San Jose series a couple years back when they both went into the conference final, um, I was at a bar with like two of my friends where it was the, the Sharks were up like 3-0 with like five minutes to go. And the beginning of the game, I bet my friend, I was like, look, we got these hottest wings in the bar. And I was like, I will eat a giant container of these bars or of these uh, these wings if uh, Tarasenko scores any goals. And they're like, all right, well, you're going to be eating the whole thing, right? And I'm like, ha So with five minutes left in this game, it's 3-0. Uh, the Blues pull their goalie, whatever, not a big deal. Um, <laughs> two minutes left in the game, Tarasenko scores the goal. I'm like, Shh. I'm like, sure. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So I was like, I was just going to eat one. I wasn't, I'm like, he's not going to score another one. Dude scores another goal with like a minute left. And then they tie the game. I remember they tied the game. Terrace Angle gets he didn't score the goal, but he like threw it on net and they went yeah. in. And it ended up being disallowed. But anyway, main that main he, point, I, I hate Terrace Angle because I hate that. He's eat hot uh, wings. he's that guy that every time Watch. they play, it's like every time he gets the puck, I'm like, oh no. I know this he's, is not gonna be good. He's clutch. But it usually man. isn't. He's he's a he's a clutch player, no doubt about it. So that was your number fifth pick, right? Yep. All right. So number four, I had uh, Patrick Line, uh, forty four goals, twenty six assists, seventy points. That was a career high. Um, that was he was thirty six in the league in points, second in team scoring, second in the league in goal scoring. He's only 20, uh, 20 years old, by the way. Not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, that was a six point increase from last season when he had sixty four. I do want to say, mainly for the fact that, um, so Patrick Laine, boy wonder, Patrick Laine. Yep. Um, when you have Patrick Laine who scores these these big goals and scores these uh, absolute snipes, snipes, he just has a hard shot. Mm-hmm. He scores these amazing things. You have to look at when just the pure fact that he scores forty four goals, right? When he scored these goals, he was coming from behind from Alexander Ovechkin, who had miles ahead of him in goals. Yeah. And then you looked at him when he came. He was coming up. He was scaring. They were tied for a second there. Mm-hmm. And it looked like Line was going to come from behind and, and win this, uh, what's the trophy? The Art Ross, not the Art Ross. The Rocket Richard. The Rocket Richard. It looked like he was going to come yeah. back and win that trophy. You know, he fell off because he got injured. That's what it yep. was. He got injured and then just he, he couldn't score the amount of goals to catch up. But that was a really close race along with Carlson as well. So close race. I, I have meant for it just because he is so young. Okay. And I mean, forty-four goals is nothing to again, nothing to scoff at. <laughs> yeah, he's a great player, no doubt. <laughs> like, I think he's only going to get better. So that's why I have number four. Who do you have number four? Um, I'm going with his teammate Blake Wheeler. Blake Wheeler, big big Wheeler. Uh, twenty-three goals, sixty-eight assists last year. Man, so traded twice. Yeah, <laughs> traded twice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's a uh, he's a fantastic player. I have him. Uh, I still have him up on my list. So. Um, all right, so number three, I debated between two and three for this one just because I love that these two players, they have a special meaning in my heart. Um, so number three, I have uh, out of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Phil Kessel. Phil Kessel had 34. Phil. Geez, no, hot dog. Hot dog. Hot what dog, dog Phil. Get it right. Is, He's going to be offended. Phil the thrill. Phil the thrill. Um, he had 34 goals, 58 assists, 92 points, which was a career high. It was pretty Impressive because he's had a very long career so far. I mean, ten years. This is his first career high. Um, he was seventh in the league in scoring, second in team scoring to Evgeny Malkin. Uh, he led the league in power play points, forty-two points on the power play, and this is also a twenty-two point increase from the season prior. I want to say Phil Kessel was uh, in the league, lead league in points for. I say the first like quarter of the season. Obviously, McDavid. Yeah. McDavid came in was like, right. "Hey, how you doing?" Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm McDavid. <laughs> um, so he came back. He he. This is still a fantastic season for Kessel. And again, he's one of those supplement players. But 
he had a fantastic season on playing with Malka and playing on the third line, playing on the first line, playing on the power play. Mm-hmm. This guy's a fantastic scorer. He played on he played for Toronto for a while while they were bad, and he was old, their only good player. So yep. it's fantastic to see him win two cups. It's amazing to see him score a career high 92 points and I mean 58 58 assists is crazy it scored another 30 goal season I think that's his sixth 30 goal season which is uh three more than Patrick Kane who's in the top 100 just saying uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm salty uh so yeah that's who I had at number three who'd you have number three I same thing Phil Phil, Phil the thrill there you go number three Phil the thrill all right so he mentioned it earlier uh I have number two uh, out of the Winnipeg Jets uh, big Blake Wheeler, uh, 23 goals, 68 assists, <laughs> 91 points, which is a career high. He's one point less than Kessel. But I will say, while Kessel is a fantastic offensive player, Blake Wheeler does it all. Mm-hmm. Blake Wheeler, big, I think he's six foot four. He's a big boy. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, huge. he's huge. Maybe he's six foot five. He's something up there, but he's huge. Uh, if you ever get to see Blake Wheeler, like I know some of these players you get to see in real life, but if you get to see these guys live, like Blake Wheeler's a, a man. Yep. <laughs> Blake Wheeler is a man. He just mm-hmm. he's just huge. He is you it's like how do these guys get the puck away from him? <laughs> like how do you do it? <laughs> he just he just his body is so big. Um but he's crazy good. I his hands are smooth. He's become a fantastic playmaker these last two seasons. Um he has he had a 17 point increase from last year which was 74 points. Uh he led the team in points, led the team in assists, uh was second in goal. Well actually he was third in goal scoring on the Winnipeg Jets, but definitely. He was also second in the league with power play points with 40. So two great power play guys. Literally, he's like an advanced Shaw. And their captain, right? He is their captain, yes. Yes, he took over from uh, from Andrew Ladd. Um, Yeah, he's just a... He's a monster, but man, I don't know how how else I can say. Go Go look at Blake Wheeler highlights. Like, and just, just imagine you going in the corner with this huge mammoth. (laughs) <laughs> like and not to mention, like no wonder the Winnipeg Jets are so good. You have a giant mammoth of a man in in Wheeler, and you have a giant mammoth of a man in uh, in Bufflin. <laughs> so yeah, you got, you got two huge men. That's just, a big team, just in it's, general. It's huge. All right, we're finally here, number one overall. You can go first. Who you got? Well, I didn't get my two yet. But oh, we'll you got number two. Who's number two? Who's number two? Kane. Kane. <laughs> Patrick Kane. You kidding me? Go home. <laughs> Get out of here. You the guy, the guy's what's your too, argument the guy's for number too two? Talented what's to, your argument to here? To only score 76 points. Are you points? kidding me, dude? Oh, that was such a bad We're year. cutting this out. <laughs> You're out of here. That was such a bad year for the, every <laughs> Hawk offensively. <laughs> like, there's no way he's going to... You're like, done. <laughs> What's what's the wrestling arena voice I was saying earlier? Get out of here. <laughs> You're not in my ring, boy. <laughs> I, I would be shocked if he's under 80 points again this year. All right, well, prepare to be shocked because that team didn't get any better. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, no way, dude. Playing, with, playing with Nick Schmaltz another year. I mean, Schmaltz is a pretty good player. No way, bud. No way. He's the, that's no... I disagree. <laughs> you're clearly, wrong. <laughs> clearly. Well, you I'm not wrong, wrong but you're wrong. you disagree. <laughs> you're wrong. You had Tarasenko too high. <laughs> no, joking. All right. Well, uh, now that we had that wrong opinion out of the way. Well, uh, we probably both have the same number one. So Yeah. All right. Yeah, you had, you had uh, Claude Giroux, number one. <laughs> no, joking. <laughs> Wrong wing. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> All right. I had the one and only Matt Cook. <laughs> number one. Okay, no, Holy for... <laughs> crap. I haven't heard Matt Cook's name in a long time. <laughs> uh, okay. For real now, Yanni Gord. <laughs> okay, no. For Nikita Kucherov, number one overall. Yep. Guy, guy had 39 goals, 61 assists, 100 points. Career high. Third in the league. Just yeah. a fantastic player on... A fantastic team. <laughs> yeah, he's he's nuts. <laughs> Him and Stamkos for a while were the best duo in hockey for 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 a little bit this season. Yep. It was just he's I don't know how to tell you again. He's one of those players when you watch him, he just does the little things so well. Like the players that get you don't just get a hundred points. You have to understand right. yep. a lot of players don't even get a hundred points in their whole career. This guy had it in one season. And I want to just say right now, getting 100 points in this generation is 
it's it's hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to get a hundred points. Like you're either Connor McDavid or you're magically Claude Giroux. <laughs> like yeah, you know it's 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 nuts. He's he's a, such a fan. He's a sniper. He's a playmaker. He has all the tools in his shed to just like go. You said, he he does everything. He's, right. he's good. I mean, he doesn't play. Even if they put they put him on the on the penalty kill last season when or two seasons ago when they had that really bad uh, that bad season, or that was last season or two seasons ago. But anyway, they put him on the penalty kill. He's has a, he's found his two way game. He's not just a winger. Again, there's only a certain amount of, of players that can drive play on the wing, and he's one of those guys. Yep. You pass him the puck, he will do things amazing, and that's just just what when I when I see this kind of player. And when I think of like, if I think of top top five players in the league, he's one of them. He's definitely one of the top five. He's become one of those top five players in the league. Oh yeah, for sure. So I'm uh, I'm excited about that. So so we are. That was we our gotta top. Wrap it up. We are gonna wrap it up. So that was our top fifteen uh, NHL wingers, right wingers in the league. This was the back skate. I'm Nico from the TO. I'm Matt. Big Bear, Maliska. <laughs> Big blonde, Big blonde bear. bear. We'll see you next week. We'll see ya. Go! Go! Go!